Hi, this is Marcus Gracie. I'm the Managing Director of Eyes Up Limited, and it's my pleasure to bring you our latest investor presentation. So Eyes Up provides tech solutions for data collaboration, and we designed our technology to address rapidly growing demand for privacy preserving technology solutions that essentially enable secure and effective data collaboration, and particularly we're focused on sensitive data. So here we are at the beginning of the digital age and every business is now a data play, whether businesses acknowledge that or don't. And they require a playbook to learn how to use data as a competitive advantage. And they also need to play smart and address all the risks. Before we get into the new rules of the game, let's have a chat about quickly what the game is and what's the playing field. So we're playing in the uh, big data economy and the game we're playing is data collaboration. When we talk about data, we usually talk about data in three states, data, data at rest, data in transit, and also data in use we call data collaboration. Arguably data at rest and data in transit are more compliance driven, whereas data collaboration is a bit more interesting because we're talking about generating insights or value accretive insights. And uh, one of the challenges that we've got in that space at the moment is uh, organizations recognize they need to collaborate with their data, but they're still a bit concerned about doing so because of issues around complying with uh, legal requirements, governance, cybersecurity requirements, and you know fears generally around data breaches. So if we look over at this uh, little graph on the right-hand side here, we can see what are essentially the forces that are affecting player behavior in this space. And they are twofold, really. One is being sort of manifest through greater leadership accountability for these compliance types of issues. So doing things smartly, complying with laws, dealing with cybersecurity issues and privacy issues. So that requires technology solutions that can handle that and deal with those things. So organisations feel tucked in on the risks. The other force, I guess, that's, that, that's uh, impacting players in this space is that businesses are realising that in this digital age, they need to collaborate with their data and participate in extended data ecosystems. So in summary, the opportunity that we address is that businesses need to collaborate with their data in order to have a competitive edge in the marketplace. At the same time, they need to do so smartly and address all of the risks. According to Gartner, they predict that 80% of the world's data is expected to reside in corporations and enterprises by 2025. That's quite significant. And they're pegging the size of the global data economy at $3 trillion. And what we're seeing uh, at the moment is sensitive data, particularly in sensitive data is more valuable data. It can generate more valuable insights. We're seeing this almost emerging as a stranded asset class because we're seeing large enterprises and organizations with very valuable and sensitive data sitting in silos, sitting in their vaults, and they're unable to use it and commercialize it effectively. So we help organizations uh, be able to do this and to be able to commercialize this data. So in summary, our solution, Eyes Up, provides a comprehensive suite of enterprise level technology solutions and tools for securing smart data plays and a playbook for teaching organizations how to use their valuable and sensitive data as a competitive advantage. This is a good summary slide if you're um, trying to remember something about uh, our company, uh, how we commercialize our technology, what, what our technology is and how we make money essentially. At the heart of our organization, we've got technology capability, and we'll sort of go into what that is in a minute, but a technology capability that's all about data collaboration. And then from that, we you can see around the edges here, around these radials, we commercialize that in a number of different ways. On the left-hand side, you can see that we uh, infuse that capability, that technology capability into other products. So some of them are existing products. So you can think about maybe like an Intel inside, you know, a chip in a computer. We take our technology and we put that inside products that already exist. And we'll come to some examples of that. We also build brand new products and we do that sometimes by ourselves or in partnership uh, with other parties and organizations. Then on the right hand side, we also directly license that technology. And then we've got this emerging uh, new secure data market. Again, we'll come to that. And that's, that's a really interesting dark horse that uh, is enabled by our technology. 
We've got a very experienced board of directors. Uh, Julian, our chairman, is very experienced in the capital markets. Myself, uh, Frey, as a technology lawyer, our other director, Dean Jocelyn, is our uh, founder. And then we've got a couple of very extremely experienced strategic advisors. Uh, both Matt and Ian uh, are involved in and around sports data and sports betting universes. And we'll come to the reason why they're involved a little later on. Over the last year, you can see some metrics here uh, around our company's performance and our company metrics. Uh, we've had some share price appreciation during the period since I've been involved for the last year, uh, which I'm pleased to see. And notably, that's underpinned by about $80 million of developed technology and, uh, you know, and some significant intellectual property uh, that surrounds that as well. Company has also been listed for about four years now. For those of you who don't know the company that well, although it's been around for about 10 years. Our mission is to be the go-to company for smart data collaboration solutions. And you know, at the moment, we're focused on enabling products or getting our technology into products in the marketplace and demonstrating uh, an adoption for our technology in the market. So we're in a go-to-market phase at the moment, and we've got some early adopters, we've got some customers, and we've got some early revenues. We've also bought a couple of companies, so we're in the process of integrating those companies, and we're building out uh, the organisation and building out a platform for our growth. We're hearing a lot about ESG at the moment, um, and, you know, the responsibility for organisations in relation to, you know, environmental issues, governance issues and social problems uh, around the world. We're fortunate to be uh, very active at the moment in an ethical gaming and sports integrity project. And that's right in the heart of uh, international sports and sports betting. And I'll explain a little more about that uh, as we come to it in this presentation. Company's been around for a while. Uh, it's been around 10 years and the technology has developed substantially over that period of time. And so has the company from a corporate level. In terms of the technology, probably in about, you know, there was a substantial uh, development jump in about 2019, where we added homomorphic encryption capabilities uh, to the technology stack and to the capability of our core tech. What that means, in uh, large words, what it means is that the company can run analytics on data <clears throat> while that data remains encrypted. So it's encrypted client side, it's brought onto our platform, it remains encrypted, the maths and the analytics are conducted while it uh, still remains encrypted and we never have the keys, we don't have the ability to unlock that data. So the keys to that remain with uh, the parties who own that data. The important bit about that is that we're probably one of the few companies in the world, I think we're the only one that's got probably a very usable interface for this, this particular uh, functionality, which allows parties to have a very highly secure <clears throat> method of dealing with uh, information. So if information is very sensitive, this is a great solution for parties. So we've developed our technology both organically and we've also acquired some technology this year. So we acquired the intellectual property and technology from Data Republic uh, during this year. And we've also acquired some technology from a company called DataPower. In terms of the corporate evolution, we're very heavy in terms of our compliance accreditation. Uh, there's a need for that when you're looking at going into very large markets and dealing with large enterprises. So we've got uh, ISO accreditation and we've had that for some years with, and that's at a company level. We've got at a product level, we've got what's called SOC2 certification. Again, it's the highest level of certi certification required for enterprises and going into large markets like the US. And, um, and so we've progressed the organisation also from being, you know, at the beginning of the year when, uh, or late last year when I joined the company, we had a small office in Parramatta with about, uh, about 10 people. And uh, as we're standing right now, we've Got about 30 people. We've uh, moved the office into Darlinghurst. We've got about double the people in Sydney. We have acquired an organisation in uh, the UK, in London. And we've got about 10 people over there. And we've also activated a company, subsidiary company in the USA <clears throat> as a beachhead to, uh, for our US operations as well. So now we have a global footprint uh, as well. 
But let's talk about <clears throat> what's under the bonnet at the core of our company in terms of technology. So we have a heavily patented uh, set of technology or, or product stack or technology stack. And it caters for all levels of requirements in relation to secure data collaboration. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the more secure end, we have an encryption engine, and that's uh, you know that has a, a number of different encryption methodologies that are built into that. But it enables at, at the higher end of security, it enables customers or organisations to bring their data onto our platform, run analytics on it while it remains encrypted. And then the sandbox, uh, as it says, it's a sandbox. It's still a governed, a heavily governed environment, but it's uh, it's a safe area where data is unlocked and can be worked on. Sometimes, uh, you know, parties will have a sandbox open for their customers to come in and use their data, play with their data, run AI across their data, or for generating new intellectual property. So if we look at this little radial up in the right-hand corner here and uh, think about that slide earlier. So we're gonna move through and give some examples of each of, uh, each of these in our organization. So enhancing existing products. So again, we're taking our technology, we're infusing it. Think of Intel inside, a chip in a computer. We take our technology capability, put it inside a product that already exists. Um, Power Index is an AI-driven digital sponsorship product and platform. We acquired this from a company called Data Power, where actually we acquired the company. We started off with a digital collaboration in terms of their technology uh, to see if we could put our technology inside theirs. We liked it so much, we ended up buying the company. And the end result of that process of putting our technology into theirs was a brand new product called the Power Index 2.0 which essentially was the first power index with, with an additional layer of capability and functionality, allowing sporting clubs to be able to bring together lots of data sets, analyze them and come up with new insights. An example of that, we ran recently ran a uh, test case, uh, sort of a proof of concept test case with a Premier League uh, football club. And they were able to bring together a whole bunch of data sets that they'd never pulled together before. And in addition to this, we added some function, functionality to this Power Index 2.0 that allowed us to bring in third-party enrichment data. So, for example, we have a group called Axiom. They're one of the world's largest provider of socioeconomic data. We brought that data in. We added that into the mix of data from this particular Premier League team. We ran analytics on it and came up with brand new valuable insights that they'd never, ever seen before about their own members and their own fans. We also build brand new products. So we partner with uh, other parties and organizations to build products. We build products ourselves also. A good example of that is the ESG project I referred to earlier, and that's with a group called GeoComply uh, in the USA. GeoComply are a cyber, uh, a cyber security organization that provide 100% of uh, services to the iGaming market, to online gaming uh, operators in the USA. And they have a large problem over there at the moment because for all the large sporting leagues and leagues and teams at any level, right down through the colleges, there's not really an effective solution to ensure that people who should not be betting on a sporting event aren't betting. For example, and they're called impermissible bettors. So for example, if you work for the Boston Red Sox, you're not supposed to be betting on a Boston Red Sox game. So we're working on a solution right now for that. And uh, we're working with GeoComply and we're running proof of concept. In fact, we're running that later this week. And we expect to be able to say a little more about this exciting uh, project and to prove this up and make sure what we think uh, this can do is a fantastic solution. And that solution involves bringing together all the uh, names of employees, players, et cetera, from the, game, from the sporting league putting that into our platform in an encrypted manner because it's highly sensitive information. And at the same time, bringing the information about the betting punters or players or sports betting customers from the betting operators together. And we see if there's any matches. So we see if there's a scenario. And then in real time, when someone's logging into their betting app, it not only from GeoComply's perspective says, well, look, are they in the right state for, for where, where, that they're allowed to bet on this game? But it also says, are you an impermissible player? And this happens in real time. Therefore, are you allowed to bet on that particular event? 
So this is a really interesting product uh, for us and a really interesting initiative. And we hope to be able to say more about this shortly. Again, up in the right-hand side, if you look at that radial, uh, if we come to the third area, we directly license our core technology as well to parties and product uh, to third parties. Uh, currently, the Sandbox product uh, we acquired from Data Republic during the year, that's licensed to a tier one health insurer in the US, for example. And we also have uh, channel partners and, and reseller arrangements in place, for example, with Deloitte and Microsoft. In addition to all of this, we've got a really interesting new twist on a data market. Uh, this emerged when we started to talk to really large data providers around the world. So for example, Axiom uh, supplying us with uh, you know, a certain uh, information and data around socioeconomics that we add into or we allow our customers to have access to. There's also a lot of other data such as telecommunications data banking data, geospatial data, for example, that we could also add in. So we're currently testing out this, uh, this structure. We built a product, so the, the Parindex 2.0 that I referred to earlier, we added in this functionality to test this. So to test us, bring in enrichment data onto our platform to add that to our customers' data that they're interesting, interested in analysing. Uh, this is really interesting for us because we know that if that this is a great opportunity for big data owners so that they can resell their data through our platform to our customers. And for our customers' perspective, it's fantastic because what we found over the last year, and we were looking back on the company for the last four years when we were renewing our strategy, was that bringing lots of different large mature organisations together to share the data can sometimes be difficult to get everyone aligned and make quick decisions. So in this case, our customers just deal with us and the data that they've got, and we can bring to the table, not only our technology and platform, but also further data for them as well. We see this as a significant market opportunity and we see this particular area starting to hot up. So when we're talking about data, data collaboration, it's kind of a new subject. It's been around for a while, but only for probably the mature data organisations and the mature technology organisations or digital type companies. Where we have mapped out some space for ourselves, um, you can see up here in the right-hand corner of this particular map. So we really specialise in high-end uh, security and sensitive information. So a high level of data privacy, but importantly, where we stand out in the marketplace, we bring very complicated technology and provide a usable interface. So even I can drive our platform and that says something. So our nearest competitor previously was uh, probably sitting up just under us on that map would, would have been Data Republic and we've now assumed or acquired all of their technology. Interestingly, in the marketplace right now, we're seeing a lot of activity during this year in terms of other capital raising activity, other uh, investments in this area and other growth of the, the sort of other companies that are on this map. What that tells us and what we also know from our own networks and uh, information is that everyone's starting to uh, aggressively drive into this space because the, uh, the parties who are providing similar types of services, there's no one who's got a suite of technology just like ours, but the ones that are close, uh, as close substitutes that we could find in the marketplace are all starting to grow aggressively because they're realising that organisations now know that this is something they have to move on. So customers are needing this service in the marketplace. In terms of target markets and customers, we've telegraphed previously that we're really interested in the sports space. Uh, it's a very lucrative uh, growing market vertical. So when we say sports space, we're talking about sports sponsorship, sports data, sports gaming and wagering. Uh, in the US right now, sports betting is opening up and there, uh, there's a huge amount of value being created and there's a number of organisations, you know, and different players in that market that are all vying to participate in the value that's uh, been created. We've uh, identified opportunities for our core intellectual property and our core capability in this market vertical and uh, we're, we're particularly focused and interested in this and We've got some advisors uh, who are specialised in this uh, area as well, who are helping us look for opportunities and helping us commercialise the technology that we have uh, in these uh, markets. 
We're also focused outside of sports. We've got customers already in other market verticals. You can see there, I alluded to uh, health insurance earlier. And we've got discussions and significant opportunities in a lot of the other verticals that are named on this graph right now. We're also, you know, like any organisation, we have an economics challenge. We have limited resources and we, we apply those limited resources so that we can get the most value from that. But we can't do everything at once. So we have commercialisation partners and channel partners that help us do the heavy lifting for other markets. And we work closely with the likes of Deloitte, Microsoft, Tech Corp Capital are good examples of that. We think it's a great time to be involved in this space. It's a great time for this technology. Perhaps five years ago um, or 10 years ago when uh, this company first started out and it was uh, looking for and developing solutions in this area, it was uh, maybe a little bit early for the market to catch up or the demand to catch up. But that's what you have to do to develop technologies that are ready for when the market's ready. So what we're seeing now is the market's ready. We have a dominant uh, technology stack in the, in the space. And we're seeing all of these other associated markets uh, growing rapidly as well. I mentioned earlier Matt and Ian. Um, so let's start with Ian. And Ian is the uh, chairman of uh, Data Power, which is a company we acquired during the year. And Ian's, an extreme, Ian's based in London, extremely experienced in the areas of sports data and sports gaming and wagering. And uh, so he's currently a director of Playtech, the world's largest uh, betting and gaming software company, for example. And he's just a very experienced executive and uh, experienced director. And Ian's gonna get more involved uh, with us uh, as we move forward. And he's incentivized to do so as well. Uh, Matt's an Aussie uh, who resides now in Vegas in the USA. Uh, Matt's a bit of a rock star in the sports sort of iGaming space. And Matt's, uh, Matt's worked for both regulators. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He's an experienced company director. He's currently the CEO uh, of a, a large SPAC in the US. And Matt's uh, helping us, and in fact, Matt and Ian are helping us. And Matt's also behind uh, BET in Australia, if you're looking for an analog to have a look at uh, you know, what Matt does. And both Matt and Ian have got their eyes out for opportunities for us. So both in terms of opportunities for our technology. So Matt introduced us to GeoComply in relation to our uh, ESG project around impermissible betting. And they're both looking out for us uh, in terms of possible M&A opportunities also. If you've got any questions, reach out to us, uh, reach out to the Capital Network or reach out directly to myself and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you've got. Thanks for allowing me to present uh, this update to you. See ya.